Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, friends, colleagues, and fellow professionals. It is your airport safety channel. It's a privilege to welcome you to this channel today, and I hope that we get to learn many mighty and professional things in our industry. My name is Isaac Otu, your regular host, and I hope we enjoy ourselves in this day's presentation. We have been looking at how well do you know your facility and we are using it to learn about the airport facilities in our aerodrome. We are currently running parts of a runway and this is the second part in the series. Our focus will be to use the Annex 14 Volume 1 Aerodromes Edition 9 and we are currently in the Chapter 3. We are currently dealing with aerodrome facilities in Chapter 3 of the Annex 14. We have previously looked at runway pavements and we looked at what constitutes the runway pavement. We mentioned that the pavement could be of concrete, cement concrete, or bituminous concrete, or asphalt concrete. As we already know, our runways are filled with markings and boundaries that help us to know the purpose of the runway. We also mentioned that the runway is purposely used for landing and taking off of aircraft. That is the main purpose of a runway. Okay, so now let's go into Annex 14, Chapter 3.1.10, where we have the recommendation on the width of runways. The recommendations for the width of runways. So the question is, how do you determine the width of a runway? What goes into determining the width of the runway? And for explanatory purpose, the width of the runway is the distance from the white runway edge marking on one side to the white runway edge marking on the other side. So assuming you are standing in between the runway, your left white edge marking to your right white edge marking makes your runway width. So how do you determine the width of the runway, what goes into determining the width of the runway. Alex 14 has a table in chapter 3.1.10 that says that the outer main gear wheel span is the main reference for determining the width of the runway. So what is the outer main gear wheel span? If we look closely on the screen, you will see the base of many different types of aircraft. This aircraft has undercarriage or wheels under them. We have the front wheel and the rear wheels. It is the rear wheels that we focus on when looking for the outer main gear wheel span. The rear wheels are what is referred to as the main wheels. So the distance between the outer main wheel, the one outside, not the wheel inside. You look at the two wheels, one is outside, one is inside. We look at the outer one to the other outer one and measure it and that makes our outer main gear wheel span. If you look at the A340, 200 and 300 series, it has wheels at the rear, which comprises of one, two, three different sets. We look at the outer one. We don't measure from the middle one, but the outer to outer. That will be the outer main gear wheel span. If we look at the A380 and the 747, 
you measure from the outer to the outer you don't look at the middle under carriage that is not your focus your focus is the widest width of the under carriage that is what you look at to determine your outer main gear will span so when you measure this the distance or the width that you get is what you will refer to when you want to determine the width of your runway in your airports also there are many other aircraft design let's look at the antonov 32 wheels in all yet your focus should be on the width between the outermost air uh, undercarriage on one side of the wing to the outermost undercarriage on the other side of the wing so if the width of this aircraft falls within the limits provided in table 3.1.10 then you use that as your reference to determine whether the runway provided can receive this aircraft or not of course there are other factors such as the acn pcn requirement but basically when we are talking about the width of an aircraft this is what we look at to see whether our runway is wide enough to receive the aircraft in question so let's have some real life pictures if you are receiving an a320 aircraft then this is what the outer main gears will be looking like this is how they'll be looking like and so you measure from the outer to the outer and you will know now when i'm mentioning the word measure it doesn't mean you go and stand under the aircraft and do the measuring you can search for the technical specification of each of these aircraft and in that record you will have the width of the outer main gear wheel span provided it is very easy to find this information by going on google by going on google you'll be able to find this information and use it to determine whether your runway is wide enough to receive this type of aircraft we have different standardized runway width in the annex 14 so annex 14 requires that if the outer main gear wheel span is below 4.5 meters that is from 1 all the way to 4.5 or from 0 if there's anything like that all the way to but below 4.5 meters then your standard runway width will be 18 meters that will be your standard runway width if it is ranging about 4.5 but below 6 meters then your standard runway width should be 23 meters also if the outer main gear will span ranges from 6 meters but below 9 meters then the width of your runway should be 30 meters taking it further if the width of the outer main gear wheel span starts from 9 meters but is below 15 meters then you have a 45 meter width runway if it is above 15 meters or if it is 50 meters and above then you can go for a 60 meter width of runway so take a second look at your aerodrome it is very important to measure the width of your runway and associate it with the widest aeroplane that lands in your airport compare it with the characteristics of the aircraft that operates in your airport and you will be able to determine if your runway is safe for the kind of aircraft 
you are receiving. Many airports have runways ranging between 30 meters and 45 meters. However, there are other provisions that makes it possible to receive bigger aircraft even with those kind of runways. But you must understand the characteristics and the mitigations involved to be able to determine if your runway is safe. So we are bringing the presentation to, the, to an end and I would like to give you my bullet for the day. And the bullet for today is no. Yes, no. Know the aircrafts that operate in your airports. Know the factors that affect the safety of aircraft in your airport. So be concerned about the type of aircraft that are flying in. Know the types, know their characteristics, know their outer main gear will span, and also look at the facilities you have provided and compare whether they are capable of safely operating such aircraft in your airport. That is what I want you to know. So the bullet for today is that know, know everything around you. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for staying true. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe and click the bell. And remember, we have a target to hit 500 subscribers. Spread the word and bring in more. Thank you. See you in the coming week.